Hi and welcome back to the channel. So of course you can pick apart everyone's content if you wish to do so. For example, mine, the audio could be better, my content could be better, my editing could be better, lots of things. And it's the same with a lot of people. But once again today I'm going to be talking about Angelica and her video titled YouTubers Stealing Money which in itself is misleading, but that's not the point of this video. In general, the video is good and well done and it raises an important topic and if she can bring that to the attention of her audience and she is doing a good thing. Even though most of the examples she talks about in the video are in fact not YouTubers stealing money from other YouTubers, uh, the video is about copyright claims and false copyright claims as well. And although some of these people are taking money from YouTubers, they generally aren't other YouTubers. They're either corporations or people from other platforms. But as I said, uh, the intentions of her video are good and you can tell that and sh she's right. The uh, copyright system needs to be fixed. But as I said, there's a few issues and you're right, they're probably minor to you but I felt like if I commented them uh, on her video or tweeted her or whatever that she just wouldn't respond or even acknowledge it and it's not because of who I am, it's just in general I suppose any comments that seem to be not praising her, she doesn't seem to go anywhere near, which is fine. But I want to make this video anyway, and it's not like it's not cutting her down like the previous video was. I'll talk about the previous video at the end because I feel like people are just going to be like, oh, he's talking about that again. According to the comment section of her video, she studied law, which also makes it a bit strange that she would make these mistakes. She talks about how she's been copyright claimed for her first Zoella video, and as she doesn't offer screenshots of these herself, we only have her word to go by. The clip that I'm talking about, I'm not going to insert it, obviously, because that's going to be a second video of copyright strike by them. It's the Curb Your Meme song. Go watch the Zoella Discover video and you'll know what I'm talking about. It's when I'm talking about her book. And in the case of a copyright strike, your video is taken down or requested to be taken down by someone and off the site. Her video that she talks about is still online and that therefore implies that it wasn't actually taken down with a copyright strike. In the case of the Curb Your Meme song, that in itself is a content ID claim. Because it's music and well the video is still up, although not elaborated on, I assume that it was automated by YouTube to be picked up regardless of if it's fair use or not. And that in itself is a flaw of YouTube, but they generally, if they have a song in their database and there's more than 15 seconds of it at a time, they will just automatically be like, Content ID claim. That's just how it is. That even happens in reaction videos. It happened to my reaction video of Time Is Up by Poppy. And realistically, because that was a reaction video, I could have appealed that, but I decided not to because I just wanted the video to be online anyway and I wasn't interested in making money from it. If a video is taken down and then you appeal it, it won't be reinstated if it's taken down and you appeal it. It won't just be reinstated because you've appealed it. It has to then be, I suppose, accepted by the person you are responding to from the claim, if that makes sense. Uh, so like they have to therefore say that actually they were wrong. Also content ID claims for music, for example, they don't affect your channel. You don't get a copyright strike or a community guideline strike. They're just there. It just means that because you use the music that the money itself for that video, unless of course you counterclaim it, uh, goes to the people that publish the song. The appeal process is flawed, I agree, but given the amount of strikes that are likely made on a daily basis, realistically YouTube wouldn't have the staff to actually look at them one by one and therefore intervene. Angelica states that she thinks that it's a bit crap that uh, YouTube has no part in the process and that whoever claims it, if you counterclaim it, you then have to send it back to them. And of course, if they've claimed it, chances are they're going to be like, 
nah, we still think it's in the wrong. If they do that, then you can actually go again and try and get it reinstated again. But if you lose that, then you get a copyright strike on the channel, or that's what Angelica says. If you get copyright strike video taken down or whatever it is, uh, then you have a copyright strike on your channel regardless. But if you do end up appealing it and it gets reinstated, then you don't. But the fact that it was claimed in the first place gets you a copyright strike. The copyright process does run on both sides being fair, and yes, people do abuse it. I uh, myself have had that happen, um, and I'll talk about that shortly. Copyright strikes reset three months after they are made. Each video has a different reset day if made on different days though. The easiest way to be safe about these things is to try and apply the 15 second rule regardless. Try and use less than 15 seconds of content that you're using for reference at one time. Sometimes you just can't and you shouldn't have to either. We have fair use for a reason, but people are going to exploit that no matter what, if they can. Fair use states that you are allowed to use any amount of content if you are making comments about it, like if you're a commentary channel and you use other people's videos for reference, it doesn't have to be shorter than 15 seconds because you are using it as an example to comment on essentially. And that's how uh, news outlets, for example, that's how they run. That's why they don't need permission to show uh, clips and stuff because they're using it for news and for commentary purposes. Next she talks about her Saffron Barker video and how it got claimed really quickly. Just immediately, straight away, there was a copyright claim. Saffron Barker is with a management called Studio 71 and they have a system basically which detects any chunks of their content creators' videos in other people's videos. I haven't personally heard of a video of someone getting claimed instantly for actual content. You do often get claimed instantly if you use over 15 seconds of music. That's happened to me multiple times. I've actually done it deliberately on multiple occasions. My whole thing is that I make videos sometimes about Poppy, and there's some videos that Poppy herself and Titanic Sinclair, who is her manager, don't want online. And so if you put over 15 seconds of music on that, it gets claimed for the music, and therefore Sinclair or Poppy can't take down the video because two people can't claim a single video, as far as I know. If I'm wrong, then I'm stuffed. My channel is stuffed, but that's as far as I know that's how it works. The Saffron Barker thing sounds like a content ID claim, but in this case it would be for a video, and uh, I yeah, I haven't heard of that. That's obviously that's rough and that's crap, really. Angelica handled it the best way she could. She decided to uh, like take down the video and uh, chop up the footage a little bit so that it wasn't recognized. That's something that you can take away from her video and kudos to her for that. In the case of H3, H3 and PewDiePie, H3 is a very valid case for fair use and YouTube not stepping in, etc. PewDiePie on the other hand, part of this goes against the title as she, as she as in Alinity, is predominantly a Twitch streamer and not a YouTuber although she does have a YouTube channel. And neither of these people were trying to steal money exactly. In a sense, they weren't trying to take ad revenue, which would be the money that the people who uploaded the videos would get. They were actually trying to get the videos taken down. But although taking down the video, it does potentially take away from the money that the person would make from monetization because the video actually isn't up anymore. Uh, that's in the case of a copyright claim. But stealing? I'm not so sure about that. I wouldn't call it stealing. But yes, you're right, Angelica. There's practically no consequences for people claiming false copyright claims, and that itself on YouTube is definitely an issue. The Cody Ko situation is an interesting one. The claim because of what he said about someone and disregard for the fair use laws in the case of the people who claimed it isn't at all fair and true. It shouldn't happen. She goes on to talk about how if you get three strikes, your channel gets taken down, which isn't entirely true. It's three in three months, and even then, it doesn't mean your channel is for sure taken down. It means it could be. For example, Venus Angelic 
Her channel got taken down for copyright claims that her mum made against her, which was complete crap. And her channel ended up getting reinstated, but my point still stands. Also, someone can create multiple takedowns of your channel at once, and it only be counted as one copyright strike if it's in a batch. Kodiko also recently had another video taken down. I'm guessing this video was made before that, but he had a video taken down by YouTube for infringing community guidelines after it being up for months, and that is just crap. This also doesn't go down as a copyright strike though, it's a community guideline strike, and that in itself is different again. Veronica Wong basically put copyright claims on every video that Shook Bang made about her. And yes, what happened to Shook Bang is wrong. I'm also not surprised that Veronica is still gaining subs because if she is disabling comments and deleting comments that are, I guess, calling her out for being a crap person for creating false copyright claims, then people aren't gonna know what happened. And also people who are like new to her channel also wouldn't know. That's why sometimes, it, although people have like big controversies and stuff, they still gain subs because it's always people who haven't heard of them and have a video and they're recommended and they're like, oh, I think this person's cool, I'll just sub to them. Without knowing the history of anything that's happened and that's just part of life, really. So you can't do anything about that, unfortunately. And should she still be getting subs? Well, false copyright claims ain't on. So I kind of agree that I think that it's a bit rough that she's still gaining subscribers. Um, I don't know how many false copyright claims she actually made. I think that there should actually be a rule around like creating false copyright claims and that maybe your channel could get taken down. Not Angelica, it's just the person who are making the copyright claims, the false copyright claims. Maybe their channels could get taken down. I guess I should say that I've had claims before against my channel. Videos removed, in fact. One when I started out and the video was under fair use, but I was scared so I didn't counterclaim it. Another was claimed by Mars Argo and she didn't want what I posted to be online, so I left it as it was and took the copyright strike. To respect her want for it not being online, it was like a four or five minute compilation of uh, previously unreleased footage and she decided to take it down. It wasn't my content, I just made a compilation um, and she took it down and that's fair enough, she didn't want it online, so fair enough. And then I got a video claimed that used, I think, I think I worked out like 1.4 seconds of a clip and and yeah, and that got claimed. That was great. Thank you, Titanic Sinclair. But I ended up appealing that. Titanic Sinclair, in this case, had 30 days to respond, or the video got reinstated and he didn't respond in time. So the video got reinstated. And ironically enough, the video I actually made about that got more views than the one that actually got taken down. Thanks for watching, and thank you to Angelica for the actual good video. I just wanted to make a response to it, and this is kind of my second Angelica video, well it is definitely my second Angelica video, but I just wanted to, I suppose, offer something else. If you are new here, don't forget to subscribe and become a Marcion, and if you do enjoy the video, don't forget to leave a like. I'm going to leave you with basically a rundown of the previous video and my thoughts on the previous video that I made. My previous video about Angelica, which admittingly was a bit hypocritical at times, is now the top video when you Google her. And so every time she puts out a new video, gets more views and press, my video also gets views because of where it is when you search her on Google. And this has led to an awful like to dislike ratio. And the only reason I'm mentioning this is because the amount of dislikes and comments imply that people aren't watching the video. They're just seeing it's about an issue I have with Angelica and going and disliking her because they're fans of her, which is fair enough, I guess. We all have blind fans, I suppose. But if you say something about me and you're a big fan of me, I encourage you to hear the person out. If you ever have questions about the content that they're making about me, 
you can either ask them or just ask me if you want if you want further clarification that is but yeah thanks for watching